I've come to this beautiful woodland today. I'm going to, to meet Neil and we're going to talk about why the woods look so good at this time of year. Hello. Brilliant. What is it, do you think, at this time of year that makes the woods look so good? I suppose it's the lack of leaves, really. Oh, right. So what's happening here is all these amazing flowers on the woodland floor are basically in a big race. Right. They've got to get all their flowering done, they've got to grow, they've got to set seed after they've been pollinated by insects. They've got to do the whole lot before the leaves on the trees come out. Right. And then yeah. everything will become really dark and that's more or less sort of shuts off their energy supply. So they're in a real rush, that's why it looks so fantastic just for a few short weeks. It really does, it's all happening at once then. Yep, absolutely amazing. So here for example, look, we've got celandines, these amazing shiny yellow ones, and wood anemones. And both of these are they're buttercups essentially, they're members really? of the buttercup family, yeah. And if you sort of think about it, an anemone is like a white buttercup. And there's a thing um, that's got leaves very similar to this called Moscatel, and we'll go right. and have a look at that in a minute. Yeah. So this is Moscatel, this tiny little thing down here. Oh, it's really delicate. Yeah, and I love this thing, it's amazing. Can you see, it's got four flowers on each face, on each point of the compass, if you like. Oh, yeah. So it's called um, Town Hall Clock. Oh, sometimes. really? Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> and Here, okay, look. What do you reckon that is? A rhododendron. Ah ha ha! Oh. Exactly. <laughs> it looks like a rhododendron, it really, really isn't, because rhododendrons, as you know, are non native, they're really invasive, yeah. Yeah. they're the last thing you want in, a, in an ancient woodland. But this is actually spurge laurel, okay. which is a kind of Daphne. You know those things right. people have in their gardens with yeah. really pretty flowers, lovely yeah. smell? Beautiful, yeah. Well, this has just got tiny little green flowers that don't really smell very much. So it's right. not much to look at. Yeah. But this is a perfect example of an ancient woodland indicator. There's a whole sort of bunch of plants, a whole sort of list of them, that people use as indicators of ancient woodland. They're right. good examples. If you've got them, you know that you've got an ancient woodland. And the more of them you've got, the more you know it's a really good established oh. ancient woodland. So it's so a good sign. You don't see it very much, and it's really easy to overlook, because you know it's weird, weird spindly sort of thing. Yeah. It looks like a rhododendron. But um, spurs are all lovely stuff. Oh, good to know. And here and there we've got violets as well. These are dog violets here. Oh, they're lovely. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous. Violets are really important in ancient woodlands like this because they're the sole food plant of fritillary butterflies. Oh, so they're really important. Yeah, so later on in the year, later on in the summer, even though it'll be quite dark in here, there'll be silver wasp fritillary butterflies flying around. They'll lay their eggs on the leaves of violets right. and that's what the caterpillars will eat. So it's the only thing they can eat? Yeah. So what's happened here where all the trees have been cut down? Well, this is how this place is managed and it's how most ancient woodlands used to be managed. It's been coppiced. Okay. All the hazel has been cut down, which is done about once every 10 years, just in one part of it, one compartment. And that allows all the light to get to the woodland floor. And that means that all of these anemones, the celandines, the orchids, the bluebells, they can all benefit from that sudden light coming down. That's right. when they do all their growing. Okay. So what about all these poles? What are they used for? Well, they're used for all sorts of things. I mean, mostly for fencing these days. They used to make hurdles for penning sheep, but right. you know, nobody uses that anymore. Um, but there is one other use I want you to see, which is just down the lane a little bit. So what's this doing here in the middle of a wood? Yeah. Charcoal. Yeah, I mean that was one of the big products of coppice woodlands, was to produce charcoal, and especially in Sussex, for the iron industry. Oh. Going back about 300 years, that was a really big deal. Now, charcoal's mostly for barbecues. Right. <laughs> I 
I've had an absolutely gorgeous day today. I've never seen the woods looking as beautiful as this. Now the only way you're going to experience this for yourself is if you go on the Sussex Wildlife Trust website and look for your nearest nature reserve and go out and see the woodlands for yourself.